How do you guys? It's Luke at Luke's Affordable Paint Service. In this video, we're going to be talking about basic mold making. Boom. <laughs> right, guys. So basic mold making uh, what I mean by basic mold making it's uh, single molds okay so you don't have to do multi-part molding you don't have to do anything complicated um, this video is going to be literally simply taking you through making the mold all right we'll go into casting basic casting next and then we can talk about mold health in another video like looking after your molds and everything else and then in the next video, I'm sorting out a degassing chamber, and then we can we can go on the progression of me learning casting uh, and reproduction of things on a more professional scale. Um, I've been playing with this for about two months now, so I'm, I'm getting to grips with different things and realizing what I'm having and not having to do. Um, but for basic things like bases, you can get away with doing it at home. Uh, same as things like barrels and boxes. So if you make a couple of things yourself and you think, I'm not going to sit down and make hundreds, dungeon tiles even, make a couple, make a mold box and just re reproduce things. So I'll, I'll take you through how to make it and then we'll have a little chat at the end. I'll see you in a bit. Right guys, so basic mould making. Here's a bit of a sneaky peek of the Gangs of Rome bases that I'm currently working on. Um, out, what you need to do is you need to get a glass surface, um, it's something that's non-stick, it could be some plastic, it could be just anything with a glossy finish is fine. Now I'm using double sided sticky tape to stick these down. Now bear in mind anything like that because these have got a cardboard bottom, um, so anything with cardboard, anything that's going to break, this will ruin your masters but you are making a mould of it so don't be afraid. Okay. Usually mould making the masters do get slightly damaged or destroyed anyway so it's just one of them things you have to take on board. Now get them all stuck down and in place, leaving about what? A centimeter in between each base, just plenty of room for some uh, support for the um, for the mold, uh, because obviously you don't want it too close together because you can break your mold. Right now, building a mold box, um, I'm using Lego uh, for this. <laughs> it's a bit bit unprofessional, but it's just it's one of them reusable resources that's very simple and quick to use. Um, now. When you're building this box, guys, leave about a centimetre again all the way around. And this is just for strength. I mean, on something like bases, it's not particularly important to have much of a space because you're not the resin won't be so heavy in the mould. Um, but if you was doing something deeper, like, you know, like an actual like a, a model piece or like something like that, you need some space because if you pour uh, quite a bit of resin in that hole, you might have some flex on your mould and you don't want that. So just out of habit, leave about a centimetre all the way around uh, and in between each thing in your mould, okay? And I'll leave some of the Lego bricks sticking out like that. One, because I've got all the same size, but two, it just makes it easier to pop it off at the end because it can be quite stubborn. Once you built your box, um, I, I hot glue a seal around the bottom. You don't have to do this. Um, you can just pour your silicon straight in. Um, and for some reason it doesn't leak out. I found that by mistake after rushing to make something the other day. Um, but hot glue makes a nice seal. It does break off. It is quite stubborn again. But you could just use sticky tape um, around the bottom and stick it to your your bottom if you if you want to use tape it's not not as adhesive and it's easier to get off than hot glue um, this is just one of the things I've learnt on the way Now, give it all a spray with silicon spray. Um, I do this so that once the uh, mould's actually gone off, um, it just makes it easier to peel off um, the mould completely. Then when it comes to mixing silicon, this is uh, 
at, at, at sorry RTV silicon. It's a, a twenty five. Uh, what the number stands for is the thickness of the silicon. Twenty five is about a standard in mold making. Uh, for terrain and bigger, heavier pieces, I suggest going up to about thirty. All right. Uh, now I'm going to be using just under what well, just over half a pint for doing this, so around five hundred mil ish. Okay. Um, no, probably about. Three and a half hundred, four hundred mil. Uh, I'm doing it in weight, um, but what all you need to know for the catalyst, guys, is rather than me telling what you've used, use five percent catalyst to the amount you've used. So if you're using some scales, then it just makes it easier, so you know roughly how much to put in. All right, and five mil is more than enough. Now, just a tip: if you are wanting to find out how much. Um, how much silicon to use if you've got a rather big mold and you're like, well, how much do I use? Um, you can use rice in the mold box. So get your product, get pour, uh, pour rice in there and completely submerge it to the amount that you would normally put silicon in. Then put that rice back into a cup and then that'll tell you, draw a line on the cup and then that'll tell you how much silicon to use perfectly. Now it is a bit of a bugger to mix so if it's warmed up it does make it easier and just mix that till it goes to the green, uh, to the colour of the catalyst which in this case is green. Now for pouring to make sure you get no air bubbles in there, pour from a great height, the higher the better. High pours get rid of all the air bubbles. If you haven't got a degassing chamber, this is what you have to do. Uh, I am actually sorting out a degassing chamber just to make processes easier and far better quality. Uh, but this is just basic mold making, so high pours do get rid of most air bubbles. Okay, um, so just do that till you've completely filled it. Um, if you've got any left over, quickly make a little mold box of a barrel or something, <laughs> so you don't waste anything. And then it's just a matter of banging on the table a little bit and getting the bubbles out best you can. Right, so now it's all about demolding. Now, having them two Lego bricks sticking out like that makes it easy to get your you know your first ones out. Um it even though silicon doesn't stick to the Lego, it causes a bit of a vacuum. So as you can see, it's quite stubborn. Alright, it's not the easiest thing to, to break off, but just bear with it. Just be a bit careful around uh, the edges of the mould because you don't want to break that. Um, but as you can see, it comes off with a bit of force. I mean, using the uh, the um, chisel to get under the, the glue to try and break it off. Um, that's why you don't have to use glue. Sellotape's more than ample, guys. It's just one of them learning curves that I I now know what I can and can't do with it, so just use sellotape, it should be more than enough. Okay guys, so I hope that's been helpful, I hope that answers questions on basic mould making. Next up will be casting and what resins to use, uh, and yeah, I'll see you in a bit. Right, so you saw how simple that is. The hardest thing about mould making is getting it out the bloody box. <laughs> so, um, if you can do that, then you're going to master this, okay? It's very simple. The only thing that worries people a bit is obviously getting the 5% of the catalyst right. If you get it wrong, if you get it up too, if you put too much in, it's only going to go off a bit quicker, all right? It's not something that's like a, an exact science that it doesn't work any other way. Um, so as long as you follow the steps in the video, like I say, use 5%. If you don't know how to work it out, just literally type in on Google, say you've used 300 mil of something, say what's 5% of 300 mil? If you can't do that math, you've got a computer that can do it for you. It's what I have to do because I'm, I'm crap at maths. All right, guys? So I hope this has been helpful. Next up, we'll go down casting. And like I say, I'll take you on my progression as, I, as I'm learning things. But the high pour uh, is what you need to do when you're doing home basic molding. Okay? Gets rid of all the air bubbles. And as you can see, that's a lovely clean mold. Apart from this one's dirty because I've used it to death. No air bubbles or anything, and that's just because of the high par and a little bit of a bang on the desk. All right, guys. If you're wanting to buy any molding materials or the same ones that I've used in this video, please check out the links to CFS below. Um, with that 10% off discount code, um, it gives you 10% off, obviously. <laughs> it really helps me out, and CFS do really look after me, and they are a brilliant company. All right, guys? So it helps me out you buying it from them. So if you would like to buy the same materials I'm using in this video, just 
click that little arrow in the bottom corner, it'll drop down, and that's where you get all the info you need. And the product code's Luke APS10. Luke's APS10, I believe. All right, but it will be all down there. For any sort of my flocks, any of my building material, anything that I use in my videos will be able to be purchased from Geek Gaming as well. Um, so if you do want to help me out even more so, use Luke's APS as a discount code for that, and that gets you a further 10% off an already compatible price. Okay, guys, so if you want to buy even my, my products, like my flocks and everything else, which really supports the channel. All right, guys, so thank you very much. Thanks for watching this video on basic mold making, and let's see where we end up in a couple of months on playing with molds and resin and stuff. See you in a bit.